Right, Shalom. So before I get going, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Wahakwadash Rakah. Double honors to the elders over at the Great Millstone who rule well, Shalom. Shalom and double honors to all the elders of the Israelite nation who rule well and are teaching the true doctrine of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, and truth and sincerity. Shalom wa barakim, that's peace and blessings to the hopeful elect men out teaching this truth in the four corners of the earth where we have been scattered. And also shalom to the rest of the one third men, women, and children of the Israelite nation who has forsaken his world and have come back to their true heritage. All right. Um, before I get going into the lesson, this message is specifically to you so-called black people, um, that being you so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, and so-called Native American Indian people. All right. You are all, in fact, the true Israelites of the Bible. You're the people of the book um, being the Bible is your true history, your true heritage, and your true um, way of life, you know, the instruction that is given, you know. So I bid you Israelites, you know, to come back to your true heritage, learn the ways, you know, and follow the instruction. All right. So with that being said, we can get into this lesson, um, quick lesson. Um, and I want to start here at Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 4. And it says... Riches profit not in a day of wrath. All right, so we can start there. Riches, the riches of this world, things that um, are accounted as riches in this world that will have you caught up um, in the mind, believing that those things are of any importance in, you know, in all reality. You know, of course, you need to um, be able to maintain while you're here on this earth, you know, take care of. You know, your personal business, take care of, you know, keeping yourself sheltered and be in a position, you know, to get the, the work of the Lord done. But beyond that, the riches of this world are, you know, they're, they're, they're useless. You know, stacking up as many paper dollars, no matter what um, kind they are, it's purposeless to um, be in the mindset to believe that those things are of any value, any true value, whatever riches might be, it might it might be, um, it's anything that's here on this earth that, you know, ultimately is going to be destroyed. And the day that the Lord, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai returns, you know, and sets this world back in its order. So there's no riches here of any sort that, um, you know, that's going to be able to protect you in that day. And then even beyond that, in the day, you know, that, you know, even more simple, I would say, the day, a day that the Lord, you know, might judge you. He might judge you to put you to death. You know, you might not wake up out of sleep tomorrow. You might not make it, um, you know, off your block the next the next morning. You know, so, you know, it gets, it gets real and it gets understanding. No matter how many riches you may have procured here in this in this world, in the world that is, um, you know, ran by, by Esau, the so-called white man, you know, who was... Um, just pitching wickedness, you know, any riches that are um, provided by him or provided from his mindset, you know, it's all destruction. So in Proverbs 11 and 4, it says riches profit not in the day of wrath, you know, because there's no way that what you have procured in this world is going to allow you to, um, no survive. You know, you can't pay the Lord for another day of life. If he wants you destroyed, that's what's going to happen. You know, we'll get get that here in um Ecclesiastes chapter eight and verse eight, where it says, There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit. You know, so it's rather going on to the point the fact that when the Lord wants you and wants to take you, if he wants to take you out. You know, you have no power over your own spirit to keep it within your body. When the Lord wants it back, it goes back to him. It says, neither hath he power in the day of death. You see, so you have no power in the day of death. You know, um, you know, in the world, they say money is power. You know, money isn't a real power. The Lord, the most high, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai is the true power. And judgment is in the hands of Yahweh Shai. You know, so... There's no power in the day of death, according to any riches that you might have. And it says, and there is no discharge in that war, you know? 
There's, that's, there's no fight there. So you might have procured all types of riches. You know, you might have a mansion. You might have a million in the bank. But at the end of the day, when the Lord wants to bring you back, he wants your spirit. It's in his hands. And there's no, there's no war in that day. There's no discharge in that war. Right? It says, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. You know, and that understanding and believing that um, your riches can profit you is exactly that. That um that wickedness that you have been given over to, and that wickedness is um you parting being part in the ways of this wicked world, you know, which is given into the hand of the wicked, you know, who is um represented by the so-called white man, who is Esau or Edom in the Bible, all right, throughout the scriptures, all right. And the Lord hates Esau. So if you're amongst his ways, amongst his thought process, you know, the Lord hates you too. You know? All right. So um, Proverbs 11 and 4, riches profit not in the day of wrath. All right? You don't, you can't, you can't obtain a bag big enough to pay the Lord to keep your life, man. That's, um, you know, called being out of your mind. So real quick, we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 23, real quick, 23 and 5. It says, will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? So are you setting your eyes upon something that isn't real? Are you blinded by, you know, the riches of this world? Do you truly believe that, you know, you making a million dollars is actually you obtaining to something that's real? Because it's not. It goes on to say, for riches certainly make themselves wings. Right? And what does something with wings do? They fly away as an eagle towards heaven. You know, you might, you got all your money in the bank one second, and um, the next second, you know, that bank account could be, um, could be robbed. You know what I'm saying? Cyber hackers. You know? Anything can happen. You know what I'm saying? When you're in the hands of the so called white man, anything can happen. Anything in this world could be taken away from you just as fast as you got it. You know, anything that you might consider being rich. You got that house. The second you don't make that payment, you're subject to it be taken away. The second you put your money in the bank, you're subject to that bank um, doing what they please or going bankrupt and, you know, leaving and putting you in pitiful case. So you can't rely and can't depend on the, this world's riches, man. Just like this scripture says, for riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle towards heaven. You know, so you have to be stacking up the real riches. And that those real riches are with the Lord. You know, abounding in his knowledge and his wisdom. You know, that it's open to you. You know, it's able to be obtained for those who are searching for it. You know, so those are the true riches. To know the Lord. To be abounding in his work. You know, to um, put this world behind you and put yourself in position you know, for salvation that is due to come. All right, those are the true riches. So we're going to go back. Uh, Proverbs 11 and 4, riches profit not in the day of wrath. And um, I want to get one more scripture on the topic, and then we can, um, you know, close it out. So we're going to go here to Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 19. And it says, they shall cast their silver. You know, those are things that are thought to be riches in this world in the streets. They're going to be casting their silver to the streets because it's worthless. And their gold shall be removed. You know, and it's just talking about the wicked, man. It says their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. See, that money, gold, silver, homes, cars, whatever you might believe to be riches that isn't, is not going to be able to deliver them in the day of wrath of the Lord. All right? There's no... There's no, um, it's a lock. It says there is no, uh, let's go back to it real quick. It's a lock, bear with me. Ecclesiastes 8 and 8. There's no discharge in that war, man. There isn't a discharge in that war. There's nothing you can do in the war against the Lord, man. Everything is in his hand. So Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 19. 
It says, their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls. You know, these things aren't going to do anything for you. You know, you got a big bank account on the day that the Lord comes back. You know, you're going to be, you know, you're going to feel so stupid, man, because that's what you spend all your time procuring. It takes time to procure those kind of riches, man. And that takes time away from you being in the Lord. That's not going to satisfy you in the day that the Lord actually comes back and crack that sky open. And, um, you know, you haven't been focused on that. You don't know what's going on. It says, neither fill their bowels. It says, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. That's a stumbling block. You being an Israelite, believing that this world is actually um, feeding you something that's righteous and good for you. You know, you might be able to be famous and, you know, travel the world and, have the cars and the fame and the money and all this stuff that you want, but that's a stumbling block, and that's ultimately your iniquity. You know, that's that's a place for you that you're completely wrong. Because again, going back to Proverbs 11 and 4, riches profit not in the day of wrath, you know, but righteousness delivereth from death, you know. So, those who are righteous abound in the um. You know, the righteous works of the Lord, abounding what the Lord um, has shown us to be correct, shown to be right, understanding his ways, putting the Lord first, worshiping the Lord, you know, getting his work done, you know, and staying um, constant, enduring in the faith. That's what's going to deliver you from death, you know, and those riches are not found in this world. Those are all heavenly riches. You know, they're not made manifest completely just yet, but we know they exist. And that's exactly what having faith is. All right. So we go read verse five and we close out. It says the righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way. All right. But the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness, you know, and it's already been claimed, proclaimed in um, 11 and four. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. So if you believe in riches, um, is going to be able to secure you, you know, into life forever. You're, um, you're heavily mistaken, you know, but the righteous, you know, those who say it ten toes down for the Lord, you know, and are constantly putting themselves in a the position to be obtaining more knowledge and abounding in the wisdom, you know, those who are going to be preserved, you know, in the day in the day of the Lord's um in the day of the Lord's wrath. Alright? So with that being said, I'm just say Lord willingness was edifying. And, um just more to consider. I'm gonna close out Shalom.